On today's show, Tesla turns its service fleet electric, we see some of the concept cars from the Tokyo Motor Show, and a DIY electric car conversion travels 1,602 kilometers on a single charge. These stories and more coming up next. This is Ecotricity's Ecotech Roundup show from New Zealand's only Carbon Zero certified renewable electricity company. We're 100% Kiwi and 49% community owned. Switch today at ecotricity.co.nz. Hi there, I'm Nikki Gordon Bloomfield, a professional musician turned electric vehicle crusader, and I'm here to bring Kiwis a weekly roundup of the biggest news stories around the world in relation to cleaner, greener transport. As always, thanks for joining me. If you're a Tesla owner or you know one who has ever been visited by a Tesla mobile service technician, you'll know they turn up to work on Tesla's famous high-performance electric cars in a gas-guzzling or diesel-chugging van, usually a Mercedes Sprinter. And let's be honest, that's not the best for Tesla's rep as a super green automaker now, is it? Well, at the end of last week, we learned that Tesla is changing that from 2018 onwards after some of its clever engineers figured out how to fit everything a Tesla mobile service engineer needs inside a heavily modified Tesla Model X. In other words, Tesla will soon be building its own service vehicles based on Model X to make its entire service fleet zero tailpipe emission. Nice job, Tesla. And way to cut costs, too. Before our next news story, I want to remind you about Ecotricity's new price plan called Eco Wholesale, a great new energy product that makes it easier to save your wallet and the planet. Eco Wholesale links you directly to our 100% renewable wholesale prices for a small admin fee. In fact, it's now New Zealand's most affordable carbon zero certified electricity. There are no joining costs, no fixed term contracts, just New Zealand's most affordable way to buy power. And it could save you a massive $400 on your home electricity bill in just a year or $4,000 on your business if you have a business. So clever Kiwis switch to Eco Wholesale with Ecotricity. It's the cleanest and most affordable way to charge up your home and your electric vehicle. It only takes a couple of minutes to join Eco Wholesale, so just follow the link in the notes below. In case you didn't know, this week marked the start of the annual Tokyo Motor Show, and this year both autonomous and electric vehicles played a heavy part with concept cars and teasers of future production models from a wide range of automakers. Following on from last month's second-generation Nissan LEAF launch, Nissan used the Tokyo Motor Show to unveil its IMX crossover SUV, a long-range, high-performance, all-electric car capable of autonomous or manual mode driving. As I'm sure you'll remember from last week's show, the hope was that we'd see a production-ready electric SUV. But sadly, that didn't materialize. And while the IMX is a neat-looking plug-in concept, it's certainly not a car we'll see in production in its current form anytime soon. What we did see, however, in its place was a Nismo concept of the all-new 2018 Nissan LEAF with the same kind of performance as a Ford Focus RS. What makes this interesting, however, is that the Nismo LEAF looks like a vehicle which I think could enter into production next year. Indeed, it could even be a higher power, longer range LEAF that Nissan has been promising us. There was also a refrigerated version of the Nissan ENV200 cargo van, but sadly there's no B-roll of that I can share here. Hopefully, however, that will enter into production soon too. Over at Toyota's both, meanwhile, Nissan's main rival was sticking to its guns with hydrogen fuel cell vehicles, debuting two new concept vehicles that I previewed on last week's show. In addition to those, however, Toyota was pushing the Concept Eye Trio that debuted at the start of this year in Las Vegas at CES, as well as a Segway-like personal mobility vehicle called Walk. Yeah, I know. The irony. While these two vehicles aren't really worth getting super excited about, however, Toyota has started to seriously talk up its solid-state battery technology, and despite sticking to its guns in backing hydrogen, says it now has game-changing solid-state battery technology that will soon be ready for market and allow it to do for the EV what it did for hybrids. Given Toyota's past love-hate relationship with EVs, however, I'll believe it when I see it. Perhaps most interesting, though, was Honda's sports EV concept car, a two-seat sports coupe which seems to strike a nice balance between retro-inspired design and futuristic EV awesomeness. Small and perfectly formed, it reminds me a little of the old 1300 coupe in terms of size, and, says Honda, it could enter into production as early as 2019 to become the first model in a new family of electric vehicles for the brand. Sadly, there's no word on specs, but if it makes production, it could be the first small, 
nimble EV sports car we've seen since the Tesla Roadster. Alongside the Honda Sports EV concept, Honda also displayed the Honda Riding Assist E, a self-balancing electric motorcycle which uses the same technology found inside Honda's Unicub personal mobility device and could help, perhaps, keep motorcyclists on their bikes a little more. As a biker though, I'm not sure I'd want the disconnect between the handlebars and the wheels that this concept has. I guess it's like power-assisted steering, right? Making a little detour from cars and motorcycles, Daimler Mitsubishi Fuso was in Tokyo unveiling something a little larger this week in the form of the eFuso Vision 1 concept, a long-range, heavy-duty truck capable of travelling up to 350 kilometres, that's 217 miles, per charge, while carrying up to 11 metric tonnes of payload. A preview of what the brand is working on for the near future, the eFuso Vision 1 was also unveiled as a celebration of the foundation of a brand new Daimler Mitsubishi Fuso brand called eFuso, which will operate alongside Fuso's internal combustion engine lineup, but will only offer electric only options. The first production vehicle, the eFuso e Canter, which is already entering service for 7 Eleven, Yamoto, UPS, Habitat for Humanity, the Wildlife Conservation Society, and the New York Botanical Garden. Finishing up the Tokyo Motor Show coverage, and yes, there are other vehicles I've not covered in depth, like the weird ass Yamaha Moto Roid Autonomous Electric Motorcycle, the Suzuki e Survivor, and the Daihatsu DN Pro Cargo, which is super cute. But I'm going to touch base on the Mitsubishi Evolution concept, a car that's taken Mitsubishi's legendary Evolution nameplate and added a little spark of electricity. Unlike its namesake, which was very much a gas guzzler, the E-Evolution is a powerful electric crossover SUV that makes use of onboard artificial intelligence, which concept doesn't these days, and says Mitsubishi will coach you on your driving style to help you become a better driver. The question, would you really want your car becoming a backseat driver? No. Me neither. If there's anything that the last 10 years has taught us about the startup transportation world, it's that there are always people trying to revolutionize the way we get from point A to point B, be it through capsules in tubes of partially evacuated air, self-driving cars, or even passenger drones. And this week, Israeli firm Aviation Aircraft hit our radar. Calling itself a cross between Uber and Tesla in the sky, Aviation hopes to commercialize autonomous electric planes that carry up to nine passengers across busy cities, revolutionizing the way that people get from point A to point B by completely circumventing those nasty traffic jams that are becoming increasingly common in the world's megacities. That's the Tesla bit. But what about the Uber? Well, apparently the goal of Aviation is to create skyways of elevated travel travel consisting of hundreds of autonomous intelligent aeroplanes. And if you want to use one, you just hail it with your phone, just like an Uber. It's an interesting prospect, but I'm not sure I want to trade busy streets for busy skies. What do you think? If you've ever spent any time driving an electric car that isn't a Tesla, you'll be familiar with the horror that is carrying around a dozen different RFID smart cards that each give you access to a different charging network. And you've probably got more than just a little jealousy for Tesla owners who just have to turn up, plug in and charge. No messing around with tags required. Well, European charging manufacturer ABBEV has quietly unveiled AutoCharge, a new technology for its CCS quick charging stations this week that automatically bills you for your charging sessions based on the unique vehicle identification code sent as part of the handshake that occurs as part of every quick charging session. Sadly, it's only coming online in Europe for now and it's only for CCS quick charging, but it makes you wonder why automakers and charging providers didn't think of coming up with such a simple solution a long time ago. Anyway, if you're a European who has a CCS car, let me know what it's like to charge with no RFID tags if you happen to live nearby to an auto charge equipped ABB CCS quick charge station. Here's a quick question for you. Last month, which automaker sold the most plug-in vehicles globally? Tesla? Nissan? Renault? If you answered any of the above, you'd be wrong. That's because the answer is BMW, which proudly proclaimed that during the month of September, it totaled more than 10,000 plug-in vehicle sales globally. That's far more than any of its rivals in the plug-in marketplace. Bear in mind that this total includes both all electric vehicles like the BMW i3, as well as plug-in hybrids across various BMW brands. But still, 10,000 plug-in vehicles on the road in one month. That's pretty impressive, right? And finally, you may remember back in summer, I covered Eric Lundgren's Phoenix project, 
uh, self-converted all-electric BMW 5 Series, which covered an impressive 748 miles on a single charge with help from the lovely Yahoo Garcia. Well, at the time, I said Eric was looking to see if he could break the 1,000 mile per charge barrier. And just before last week's show, the team managed to cover 995.5 miles, that's 1,602 kilometers, on a single charge of the car's 133 kilowatt hour battery pack at the Auto Club Speedway of California in Fontana. To put the distance in perspective, that's further than the iconic John O'Groats to Land's end route in the UK, and further than the distance from my studio in Portland to Yahoo's office in LA. So well done guys, sure you didn't hit the mileage that you wanted, but it's still pretty impressive. Good on you. And with that, it's time for me to bring another episode to a close. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Tell your friends about the show. And if you've got some feedback, be sure to send it our way. As always, I'll be back soon with more Ecotech goodness. So make sure you hit that notification bell to find out the minute a new show is uploaded. And in the meantime, enjoy your weekend. Make sure you do something fun and help keep those wind turbines spinning by switching to New Zealand's only Carbon Zero Certified Renewable Electricity Company. That's Ecotricity New Zealand, of course. Thanks for joining me. I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield. Kakite. See you next time.